Howdy y'all, it's Evie Oddly, the winner of season 11, and this month I'll be honoring William Dorsey Swan. They are the first ever recorded drag queen in American history. And to make things so much spicier, they're a former slave. They were born a slave and they were actually arrested for hosting drag balls back in the 1800s. The first person ever to come out and say, no, what, what I'm doing with my life is fine. Drag is this freeing art form for me, and to find out that there were people who felt the only way that they could beat the oppression around them was to just play dress up and live the fantasy. Back in the 1800s, it blows my mind. This person had to learn how to read and write at a time when it was illegal, flee to the north, and only to be incarcerated for being, uh, essentially for being a drag queen. It's amazing to know that people were fighting for us and trying to advance our movement long before history even led us. When I found out I won the show, actually, I, I just feel like my, my mind went blank because I had worked so long and so hard, like since I was a little twinkling, to get to Drag Race in the first place. And then to like have that dream come true and then like wake up in another dream where suddenly like you're a winner, I like, went completely blank and was like, I'm gonna need like a few weeks to process this. And was just kind of moving through the world being like, I did it, I did it all. I, I won at life. <laughs> From this experience, I've learned the same thing I've learned my whole life growing up, which is that our country has a lot of really complex and very long standing issues with race and specifically how it treats black people. You know, going on such a major platform and really being exposed to some of just the best and worst things people have to say, you get to notice exactly how deep those issues run. But the best you can do in the world is just continue to exist honestly and, and fight for the equality, the representation, and the love and respect that we all deserve. If you exist so visibly, like, you're already winning, you're already taking one step. I think the biggest piece of advice I would impart to a young queen of color is find a way to speak your voice no matter what gets thrown at you. The best thing you can do for the future of not only drag, but art in general is be authentically what you are, and if if they hate it, they'll they'll see that they were wrong in ten years. <laughs> I want people to remember me as a risk taker. My risks don't always pay off, but I do think that it is important to push against the grain and to have somebody who's willing to speak and to shout when nobody else will raise their voice. I think there's plenty of work to do, and the fact that I see so many different things that can be done, it, I guess it does give me a little bit of hope. Like, oh, well, there's, there's still a way. There's always still a way. I just wanna keep growing. I wanna keep trying new mediums. I wanna keep experimenting with how my art can be put out into the world and how it can influence things around. So I just wanna keep making. <laughs> Until I get sick of this. <laughs> Do you want everything RuPaul's Drag Race at your fingertips? Then head over to YouTube now and subscribe to the RuPaul's Drag Race channel. And you will get all the episodes of everything you ever want, including brand new episodes of Whatcha Packin'. Hi.